Hey guys, it's Lego, aka Legoli Flash here. I have a super busy IRL video schedule this weekend, and so I real quickly wanted to go over these weapons, the shotgun and the new bow from Trials of Osiris this weekend in Destiny 2. So I know it's not here yet, but I have a really good idea of where I want to take these weapons, and I want you to be on the lookout for these perks as well. So here we go. Before we get started, I just want to see if you comment below what you're going for real quick. What do you think you want on these guns? And then after the review, uh, go back and look at your comment and maybe make an adjustment. We'll see. We'll see if, if what I have to say changes your opinion about things because I'm pretty excited about some of these roles. Let's start with the slug shotgun, the Inquisitor. I'm going to be going over the non-adept versions. I might jump into the adept a little bit, but I'm just assuming that it's going to be like last season and we don't jump into the adept stuff until a week or two into trials. Um, so I'm just going to be going for the base rolls. What you're going to be looking for on Friday uh, as you kind of watch this video and prepare for what roles you want to be keeping. So, first of all, this shotgun is a stat monster. There's no way around it. You can get to 100 range, 100 handling, both together pretty easily, uh, no matter what subclass you're using. It doesn't depend on elemental capacitor like some of the shotguns depend on. The first thing you can do with this thing is turn it into a mini chaperone. You could put opening shot and tunnel vision for the follow-up shot, so you've got accuracy stuff going on for both of these with the 20 aim assist and the 20 aim assist and the negative 20% accuracy cone size, negative 5% accuracy cone size on opening shot. But for our purposes, um, we're gonna boost the handling here with some fluted barrel action, put a range masterwork on this thing, and then accurize rounds. And so what we've done now is we've got a shotgun that is almost max range, almost max handling, and it will be max range on your first shot with opening shot, which gives it that plus 25 range. And then you've also got the quick charge mod, which is arc that you should be putting on everything that gives you plus 20 handling to every shotgun fusion SMG. And so for sure we're gonna have 20 handling um, and then with range, we're gonna have opening shot. So that will boost range and handling to 100 for your first shot. And then on the follow-up shots, you've got tunnel vision to help you turn into a mini chaperone. You got the extra aim assist. You don't have quite as much range, it'll be at 93. Um, but that will be the full package. And then we have to remember on top of all this that we have Alacrity, the Trials Origin trait, which is gonna give you that plus 10 aim assist and plus 10 range. So really that range will be 100 if you're playing Rumble or if you're playing and you're the last man standing in Trials. So for sixes it won't matter as much, but for Trials, for Rumble, that's where it's gonna matter. So that's pretty great. This is just like mini chaperone build. Awesome. But I wanna do something crazier with it. So stay with me. We're going to build number two uh, is going to be either Swashbuckler or Adrenaline Junkie, depending on your what you like going for. If you have a melee build or a, a grenade build, I think that Swashbuckler is easier because you just don't get grenades as frequently. So Swash seems like the easy go-to build here. And then we can stick with pretty much the rest of our build the same. That second the first like real perk column here i might go for something like if you're running a, a, a adrenaline junkie you could run demolitionist to help get the grenades back quicker or you could run that anyway even with swash that way you keep having your grenades back up it's just a great option anyway i don't really feel like i need i won't need handling for sure with perpetual motion but i might need stability maybe i'll need that extra reload speed but i don't know i think that subsistence could be a better option subsistence Pulse monitor, I'm, I'm not really gonna be using that. I'm just gonna have it out the whole time with Swash, so it's not. I'm not gonna need stuff like that. I think that maybe tunnel vision could be cool here, maybe subsistence. But what I'm doing with this build, let me let me show you what I'm doing here. So I'm making this thing. So my goal for this this build right here, this second build, is to make this into a one shot body shot machine with arc 3.0 and so anytime that makes it easy melee kills on the titan or the new warlock ability and that will turn this thing into a one shot body shot kill for i believe uh 4.5 seconds so not crazy long uh but that is a really easy way to make this thing a super high range super high handling one shot body shot machine run in melee immediately you've got the body shots down so that's really cool too 
I've been experimenting a lot recently. Oh, and I should mention, you can do the same thing with Adrenaline Junkie. Uh, if you go with the Adrenaline Demo Build, same exact thing. It gives you the same 33.3% buff, which you can use um, to one-shot body shot. Uh, and just to show you the math on that real quick, here is our pinpoint slug. We're in the Destiny Massive Breakdowns, a copy of it, so we can adjust it. Destiny Massive Breakdown spreadsheet. The body shot damage usually is 151, but we're going to add swash times five, and you see we've got a 201 body shot, so a 0.0, .0 time to kill. As soon as you pull the trigger, time to kill up to about 10 meters. If you're probably like nine would be a, a better bet, I think at 10 damage fall off starts coming in for slugs and that's gonna mess up your one shot kill at higher resiliences. You want that 201 body shot damage. So about nine meters one shot kill immediately. That is pretty insane. There is another shotgun that can do this and I wanted to bring it up real quick because it's important for us to compare the two to see you know, if you're not a trials player you wanna do this or if you're just wondering why should I go for the trials one. We also have the No Reprieve Seasonal Shotgun that can do basically the same thing. The only difference is we can't max out the handling and we can't max out the range quite as easily. Um, so, but this does have great other things going for it. For example, the intrinsic trait that all the seasonal weapons have on it is this right hook which dealing melee damage gives this weapon increased target acquisition and range for a short period of time. So I take it back. We do actually get the range. I thought it was just the target acquisition, but we get range and aim assist. So that will boost up this aim assist here to something a little bit higher. I have a targeting adjuster mod right now. Let me take that off. So base aim assist is 38. So we're gonna get extra aim assist or target acquisition. I'm assuming that's aim assist. From right hook, we're gonna get it from some targeting here. And so that will be more along the lines of like 50, I'm assuming. And we can we got the same build here, but we're getting we're getting benefits for whenever we get the melee kill. We're getting swash, and then also you can get pugilist, which you can't get on the trial shotgun. And pugilist will give you 20% melee damage back on a shotgun hit. So you get the melee, get the swash times five, and then you get the shotgun body shot kill at up to around nine meters ish, and then you get 20% of your melee back. So if you're running something like Peregrine Greaves on Titan and not Skull Fort to get that one punch kill, then you get 20% of your melee back plus whatever other mods you're going, you're gonna have your melee back really fast, especially if you get more than one body shot kill or just more shotgun kills during that time. Uh, so there you have it. That shotgun can get close to the same thing, not near the handling as the trials one, but I just wanted to show you another example of something you could do for the one body shot kill slug shotgun. This is a great option. I don't have one of these yet, but I'm very excited to get one. Okay, back to the Inquisitor. There is one other thing I wanted to cover. I don't think that Harmony, I've covered this first column pretty well, what I would go for. I, I just feel like subsistence and really demolitionist and tunnel vision are the only things I'm really interested in here. Maybe there is a niche use for one of these other things, but I just don't see it for me. I'm focusing on the build. So adrenaline junkie, swashbuckler, both great. Under over, I don't know if I'm killing someone. I don't really care about their overshield with a shotgun. Opening shot is great if you're not going for some crazy build. Fragile focus, I don't know why you need 20 range on this thing. Like normally that maybe if you don't spec into range and you spec into something else, but what else do you need other than range and handling? I, I don't know. I don't really need stability on this thing. So in my opinion, don't really need fragile focus. You've got plenty of range. You don't really need harmony. I'm going to showcase that real quick. If you get harmony on this thing, it only brings you up to 181, which isn't enough to one body shot anything. So I don't really see the point in dealing more damage unless the only thing I can think of here is if you are trying to one hit kill with the headshot further with damage fall off, but that's so like unlikely. I don't think it's something you need to worry about. So really bottom line, swash, adrenaline, and then golden tricorn it is something, I don't know if it's something, I'm digging into it a lot for other weapons right now, 
Midas fusion rifle, two bolt kill with a fusion rifle with golden tricorn. It's pretty insane. That's what I've been messing with lately. That's what got me really on this video to talk about the shotgun is I was like, oh my gosh, but it doesn't really matter because Swash and Adrenaline Junkie are both one hit kill body shot kills. The only reason you would want to go for golden tricorn is if you were just a quick play monster and you wanted to line up all your cards right which is very possible with arc 3.0 to get golden tricorn going and then you have longer time to proc your one hit body shot kill because this one lasts for 10 seconds instead of the typical 4.5 seconds that you get from swash or adrenaline junkie now on the flip shots on the flip side i should mention that the seasonal shotgun you can get enhanced swashbuckler on it and enhanced swashbuckler lasts for 6.5 i think it's 6.5 it's a second and a half longer i don't see it right here but i'm pretty sure it's six seconds instead of 4.5 seconds you have like a second and a half longer so any extra time i've found on things like successful warm-up is very helpful so of course on swashbuckler something after a kill you're gonna want that extra time so yeah, I, it's gonna be up to you which one, if you don't play trials that much, you wanna go for the seasonal one, that's great. You can still do the one hit kill stuff. If you wanna play trials, you wanna get it going this way, that's great too. Another thing I need to mention, aim assist on this thing. Aim assist is at base, let me take this target mod off, is 35. So at base is 35, at base on no reprieve is 38 pretty dang close no reprieve has a little bit more but the inquisitor the cool thing about it is you have alacrity let me put this back on the way i want it and if you're using maybe you're going for the uh maybe you're going for the mini chaperone build and if so and you've got it built out like this maybe you're a, a rumble fanatic or you're just last man sitting in trials a lot alacrity's going to boost up that aim assist by 10 and then you've got opening shot boosting up your aim assist by 20. And then you've got, if you get a kill, you've got tunnel vision boosting your aim assist by another 20. And then say you put a targeting mod on 40, that's 50 extra aim assist on top of your aim assist here, which brings you to 90 aim assist. You put just one helmet targeting mod on, you're at 100 aim assist on a slug precision shotgun. That sounds kind of crazy to me. So you could have a 100 range, 100 handling, 100 aim assist, slug, shotgun. Wow, okay, that's that's pretty crazy. I wanna try that out. Uh, maybe there's something that exists already like that. I'm not a huge slug shotgun person, but that sounds crazy. So my favorite things that I'm going for is this build right here. This is your mini chaperone with 100 aim assist, potentially 100 aim assist, 100 range, 100 handling. Sounds great. Or your one hit kill body shot wonder with swashbuckler or adrenaline junkie you can throw on demolitionist or you can go golden tricorn if you really want to go try hard and have 10 seconds to go on your spree so there are our slug shotgun options okay let's move on to the bow so we covered two big really big ways to run the slug shotgun some really cool stuff it can do now let's run over whistler's whim i keep saying the shotgun inquisitor <laughs> Let's run over the bow, Whistler's Whim. So this is a lightweight bow, not super appealing to a lot of bow people. I know for me, precision bows are kind of just the way to go. Um, I really like Biting Winds is like my favorite, one of my favorite bows of all time. I know Stadia Time was on Destiny Master Breakdowns recently talking about how, he mu how much he liked that one. Uh, and I love that the accuracy is so high on it and the aim assist and it just feels so sticky and so easy to use on a controller. I love it. And so for a lightweight bow, I know Merc was just on Destiny Massive Breakdowns. I think he was the one mentioning that they're buffing the way that accuracy feels on these things. Accuracy is so low and it feels so hard to hit things. But there's a really cool perk on this thing, one in particular that I want to check out. Yes, you can, well, let's, let's spec it out. Okay, so... If we bump up the accuracy with everything that we can here, we've got fiberglass arrow shaft, that, yeah, and then natural string for a little extra accuracy. That puts us up to like 68. So we're getting up there. And the aim assist on this thing is not bad at all. And then we can get extra aim assist from moving target. That gives us a plus 10. So then I'm bringing it up to like 84. That's pretty close to like the base. We're, we're already like passing up 
Biting Winds. And then you could run Rangefinder if you want that fall off distance to be even further on the aim assist, which is pretty cool too. Um, Killing Wind, which is a really good option that does something similar but also adds a ton of range. Um, but if you're wanting just a speed lightweight bow, you can of course go Successful Warm Up or Archer's Tempo, um, which will boost the draw time of the bow so you can just shoot it faster. Uh, tunnel Vision could be good for that if you go with Successful Warm Up or Killing Wind. Both of those great for Successful Warm Up. Um, but if you're just going for that first shot and you want faster stuff, Cornered maybe, I don't know. I'm still not a big fan of Cornered. Um, but just that moving target and opening shot or just moving target archer's tempo or successful form, it's great. The main thing that I want to talk about with this bow though, I feel like I've just been generalizing over a bunch of stuff because I don't really care about all the other ways to build it. The one way that I'm concerned with building this thing is gunshot straight because gunshot straight, it reduces your aim assist, it says that it reduces aim assist comb by 35%. It's kind of a big penalty. If you've used it on a hand cannon, you probably know what I'm talking about. But uh, it increases damage by 20% on bows. And let's take a look at what that does for bows. Harmony is the same 20% as you can see here, multiplier to damage. That gives us a body shot of 103 damage. So with a lightweight bow, we're two shot body shotting with a bow at 103 damage a body shot. That's pretty crazy. I I feel like I like, I'm a big fan of Wishender because you don't have to draw back to do full damage. You just like pull the thing and it'll do over a hundred body shot damage. You can just clean up two shots no matter what, you know you're gonna nail it. And with gunshot straight, with this gun, you will have to pull it back for full damage, I believe, but you'll be doing 103 damage a body shot to two shot body shot at pretty much any range you're wanting to hit because it's a bow. That sounds pretty awesome. We'll see how it affects your aim assist, how much you can hit your shots. But if you're hitting your shots, even if they're body shots, it's going to feel pretty awesome. And then you can get aim assist boosts from things like Alacrity, like we talked about earlier with the shotgun. You've got moving target you can put on here or range finder if you want it. I feel like that'll help make it a little stickier. Um, but I feel like those are the perks I'm going to be going for with gunshot straight. I'm not going to be going for multi kills with this thing, I don't think, but we'll see how it plays out that these are really the two things I'm going to be looking for. Really, I'm just going to be looking for gunshot straight on this thing. Maybe there's somebody else who's just a lightweight bow fiend and they just want to shoot as fast as they can successful warm up or archer's tempo. Maybe that's you. But for me, I'm going to go for that extra aim assist and I'm going to be going for gunshot straight because both of them rely on aiming down sights. Yeah, you have to you have to aim down sights for moving targets aim assist. You have to aim down sights for gunshot straight. Sounds pretty great to me. So that sounds good. Okay, so I just want to summarize real quick. We've got Inquisitor Shotgun, we've got Whistler's Whim, Inquisitor Shotgun, I'm looking for particularly Swash or Adrenaline Junkie for the one-shot body shot kills, or if I want a Chaperone build, I'm going for Opening Shot, Tunnel Vision to get basically a mini Chap with 100 range, 100 handling, 100 aim assist too, um, on follow-up shots of course but pretty great. Even if you don't have the 20 aim assist too, you can put on targeting mods to pretty much get there. If not 100 aim assist, really, really close. So that's cool. And then Whistler's whim, I'm going for gunshot straight for the two body shot kill. It sounds pretty awesome. I'm excited to get these weapons. Hope you guys are. Hope you enjoyed this quick breakdown on perks to look for, and I hope that it helped you out. Follow me along for more Destiny guides that are a little more cinematic than this. So this one was a little info heavy, uh, but feel free to follow along, sub to the channel. I'd love to hear what you think in the comments. Thank you so much. Until next time, GG.